vacation. So today we're here as a National Day of Action, um, organised by the National Union of Students um, to protest the current Liberal government's attacks on students. Um, it looks like this election is going to tell us whether we're going to get fee deregulation or not. If the Liberals get in, we're going to have fee deregulation, we're going to have $100,000 degrees. Marginalised groups of, in students are going to be locked out of education. government is going to be cutting 20% um, of their funding to universities. Um, this is the first step to fee deregulation. The students are not tricked about this. We can see their plans. Um, the government has conf confirmed that uh, fee deregulation is still government policy, which means that it's going to come back when the um, coalition comes to the election. If, we, if they win a double um, majority of both houses in this next election, we will have fee deregulation by the end of the year. Uh, this year, we will have um, $100,000 degrees. We will have marginalised groups um, stuck, cut out of education, not able to access a quality education. Um, they also want to lower the threshold to $42,000. This is going to mean that people living off $800 a week are going to be having to pay back their hex, maybe even if they're not working in a profession that they've done their degree for. Um, and we've, we're, that's also going to be targeting uh, single parents that are mothers, so women are going to be uh, further marginalised from education and we're here as students to say no. Um, we detest this and we will not stop fighting until they st um, stop trying to deregulate university fees and give us the um, funding that we deserve. here protesting the uh, pretty appalling cuts that the Liberal government are wanting to implement. Um, so they're wanting to implement a 25% uh, fee increase and decrease um, funding to tertiary education by 20%. Um, they also want to have um, families of dead students pay back their heads debt, which is pretty um, horrendous. So we're out here protesting um, against all of those um, hideous uh, proposals um, because we don't believe that the Liberal government or Malcolm Turnbull or Simon Birmingham stands with students. These um, proposals will have a really, really detrimental effect on the welfare of students and we'll see that many students, especially from low socioeconomic backgrounds, do not have access to quality education. administration of an absolutely despicable government and it's a government that is running this country in the interests of big business. Shame! It's a government for big business and now of course with the silver tail merchant banker Malcolm Turnbull at the helm it's more clearly a government by big business as well and they want big business they want to take a big business mentality to higher education policy, which is what these changes are all about. They are about increasing the cost of our education. They are about keeping working class students out of higher education. They are about turning our universities, where we go to learn, into profit-making factories where vice-chancellors and university boards can turn a sweet revenue while students and staff pay the cost. Yeah. They are 
are about explicitly turning our education system into the American higher education system. That has been the goal from the start. It was Christopher Pine's goal, it was Tony Abbott's goal, and it's now Malcolm Turnbull and Simon Birmingham's goal. They want this education system to reflect the basket case that is the American higher education system. Where student debt, where student debt is more than one trillion dollars. One trillion dollars, that's almost the size of the Australian GDP. One trillion dollars worth of student debt in America and they want to replicate it here as well because it's profitable, it's more efficient. You know, whenever a millionaire says they want something to be more efficient, you know you're in trouble and it makes more money for big business. But it is protests like this that have stopped them in their tracks which I think makes the latest round of reforms even more ridiculous because we've already beaten these reforms not once but twice in the Senate by doing exactly this again and again, protesting on the streets and taking a stand. So they can bring back their reforms this time and they can bring them back another time and another time again if they want. But we know what works. We know how to beat them now. And that is by mobilising our numbers on the streets and taking a stand. And we will beat these reforms again and again and again. When Tony Abbott got into power and Christopher Pine, his crony, the education minister, took what Labor did and tried to go even further, trying to get through deregulation, trying to uncap university places and reduce funding to the sector. We already knew how to fight back. We did it again. We protested and we beat them back twice. And now they've come back today. A government that's achieved basically nothing the whole time it's been in, in, uh, in office. They're desperate now and they're coming back as hard as they can. They're proposing a funding cut of 20% to higher education. They want to continue with the uncapping of university places. They want to deregulate our university fees, which is going to jack up the prices enormously. And they want to rob Hex from our graves, from our next of kin. Doesn't matter the circumstances of our death. If we die with a Hex set, our family's going to have to suffer the consequences of that. Absolutely disgraceful. It's shameful. These changes are going to triple student debt to $180 billion. And if you think this is about balancing the budget, that's not the case either. It's going to increase the budget blowout in education by 650% to $11.7 billion. So it's got nothing to do with balancing the books. It's got nothing to do with improving our education. This is about profits to the university administrations, taking more money out of students' pockets and handing it to the rich. So I'm going to talk a bit about TAFE now. As it was said, I am a TAFE student. Um, in Victoria, when the Liberals were in power between 2010 and 2014, they cut $1.2 billion from the sector. These cuts resulted in 50% of TAFEs running at a loss within one year of these cuts taking place. 50% of these registered training organisations. That meant fewer courses on, on offer. That meant larger classes. That meant staff were under more and more pressure to give us a quality education. And of course, that meant our fees increased dr dramatically. If you look at the numbers today, apprentices are dropping out at a rate of 50%. Only 50% of apprentices are actually completing their courses. This is at a time where we have a skill shortage. And this also means that more disadvantaged students do not have the opportunity to get the education that they want or that they deserve. So there were protests back then. Unfortunately, we didn't win them. Uh, and it's a tragedy because the TAFE sector still is crippled and if there are any TAFE students in the crowd today you would understand the difference in education between TAFE and university. The cuts absolutely destroyed the sector. In Australia, they say they can't balance the budget unless they rip funding out of healthcare and education. 30% of the companies that earn more than $200 million per year pay zero tax. That means every single one of us here, every single individual at this protest, pays more tax as an individual with our wages than 30% of the richest companies in this country. Yeah. So do not tell us that you can't balance the budget unless you take money out of higher education and healthcare and welfare. That is bullshit. It's always been bullshit. And what Panama shows is that it's even more bullshit than what we thought it was before. Our next speaker is the Ethnocultural Officer of the National Union of Students. Her name is Betty Belay. 
She's been a long-term activist and a fighter for a fair education system in this country. Please make her feel welcome. I'm the National Ethnocultural Officer of NUS. Um, I'd first like to start by acknowledging that we are meeting on the land of the Wandering people of the Kulin Nations, and I'd like to pay my respects to their elders past and present. Um, and I want to also want to acknowledge that this land was stolen and never ceded, and it always was and always will be Aboriginal land. Thank you everyone for coming today. Um, for those of you that don't know, NUS, the National Union of Students, is the peak representative body for tertiary education students all across the country, so that's TAFE and universities. Um, thank you for those who've come out before. Thank you for those who are here again. Um, and <laughs> we've defeated deregulation three times, and we're back here again fighting the same fight because the federal government refuses to give up on their fight against students and against young people in this country. It's a shame! It's a shame that we have to be here again, but the government won't listen to us. Students have held mass demonstrations, stunts, lobbied across, um, lobbied, lobbied senators across the country. The terrible government will not give up. It's because of these efforts and because of our protests and stunts that the government have put deregulation on the back bench, but are coming back hard this year. What we need to do and what we need to continue to do is put pressure on the government by doing exactly this, mass demonstrations showing them that the country does not support their attacks on higher education. The government does not support their attacks on opportunities and the future of young people in this country. But this fight did not begin with just the fed this federal government and this round of deregulation. It began when we first started stripping um, access to tertiary education by the introduction of the HEC system. The HEC system limits, it, the HEC system by giving people debt limits the access to education. Although we have to pay it later, the fact that we have to pay at all is a shame. <laughs> Students fought hard then, and now we're fighting ourselves, fighting harder to reduce the amount of debt and to like keep the amount of debt tame. It's ridiculous. The fact that we have debt in the first place is a disgusting thing. Surely, our hex debts and the idea of this debt is chipping away at our quality of education and is chipping away at our access to education. Those that come from lower SES backgrounds who are disadvantaged, those that come from migrant and refugee backgrounds, should not be limited in their access to higher education, first and foremost by deregulation, but secondly by hex. The Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull told us all that we have to, quote, live within our means. Now, you know, like this guy's a former merchant banker. He has a secret bank account in the Cayman Islands. Nobody knows how much is in it. He used to be the lawyer for Kerry Packer in the 80s, and he successfully argued that the richest man in Australia should pay no tax. So when a scumbag like that tells me that I have to live within my means, it's like, excuse the pun, but it's a bit rich. On the other hand, it might seem like common sense, right? You think, yeah, live within your means. You can't spend money that you don't have. All right, that's logical. You know, my grandparents told me that when I was a kid. It seems like common sense. And yet, this world is built on, you know, financial speculation, property development, the whole thing's a big gamble. All the people who are so-called the most important people in society, the rich and powerful, they're always spending money they don't have. That's how the whole system works. That's what greases the wheels of industry and uh, uh, production in this, in this, uh, uh, on this planet. It's different for us. You know, the rest of us, we're used to scrimping, we're used to saving. We actually know what, we know what it means to live within our means. We don't have to be told by the richest man in Parliament uh, to live within our means. But, uh, there's more to it even than that. When they talk about our means, what are they really talking about? Those of us who have any money at all, are lucky enough to be able to say that we've got it, but it's not what we're entitled to, it's not what we should be earning, and it's certainly not the amount of money that we've produced. Our money, our means, has already been stolen from us and it's hidden away in those secret bank accounts that we've been hearing about on the TV news all week. Right, that's where our money is. They tell us to live within our means. How can we do that when they're living with our means? And it's not just the cash. Right? I mean, it's bad enough when they talk about the cash. When Turnbull says live within your means, what he's actually saying is if you can't afford an education, you're not entitled to get an education. Yeah. 
We should be outraged. We're right to be outraged. We're right to be furious. Like I said, it's our money, and it's not just the money. When they talk about our means, we should talk about our universities, built with public funds, subsidised with public funds. They're our university. Right? Live within our means, that should be our means. But none of us here own that. None of us here own the universities that, uh, that dot this city. Malcolm Turnbull himself doesn't own a university. Right? If I say live within my means, in the context of my education, what that would literally mean was that I could make... My education would consist of whatever crazy, batshit crazy ideas I can come up with sitting in my lounge room staring at my wall because I don't own a university. Right? None of us do. They should be. That's the pri precisely the point. These things should be our means. What they're really pushing at here is the question about who pays. Right? That's what they're pushing at. Turnbull thinks you should only have an education if you're rich. Right? The student movement over many, many decades has had some fine slogans. One of my favourite is education for all, not just the rich. One more thing, right? Take a look around. This is a university town. Right? Universities, uh, uh, education is now the biggest export, the most profitable export in the state of Victoria. It's the third most profitable export, export in the whole country. These cities, these buildings, RMIT and Melbourne Uni have been expanding at such an enormous rate over the last 10 years that there's now, Queensbury Street is like some frontier border town with these two empires facing off against each other, right? I saw a report in The Age last year that said RMIT University owns outright somewhere between 5 and 10% of the actual CBD. They own it outright. Now, I know a guy, a lecturer, who's, he, he lives with his kids, right? He's got kids, he lives with them. He sees them one and a half days a week. Because he teaches evening classes and Saturday morning classes. He has to because the university says there's no space available to do trivial little things like, I don't know, running classes. The, the, his kids are at school by the time he gets up and they're in bed by the time he gets home. That's the modern education system. Now you'd think, you'd think, that if the university owns somewhere up to 10% of the city, they wouldn't have trouble finding space to run classes. You might look at RMIT here and notice, gee, they build a lot of buildings. They build a lot of buildings. There's this construction site going on here right now. Right? You might think, oh great, that crazy lecturer who spoke at the rally, he was saying there's no rooms for classes. Well, they're building new classrooms, right? Wrong! Wrong! But look at the hoardings on the construction sites and you'll see a big sign there saying, commercial leases available. Right? They're not building. Don't be, don't be fooled. This construction site is not about prioritising the educational needs of students or the actual work needs of staff. It's building a bloody glorified shopping mall across the road from the biggest shopping mall in the city. Right? Again, I say, if that's what education means in the 21st century in Australia, then their system is broken. And we're going to fight for something better. We're going to fight for free education, for education for all. Uh, and my other favourite slogan, because uh, I, I think my other favourite slogan from the student campaign is always been, bullshit, come off it, our education is not for profit. Because we are calling bullshit. They say they can't afford to pay for our education. They say they can't afford to provide for it. We call bullshit. We know where the money is and we demand that it gets spent in our interests, not the interests of the rich and powerful. So bullshit, come off it. Our education is not for profit. Bullshit, come off it. Our education is not for profit. Bullshit, come off it. Our education is not for profit. I'm here because I'm a student and I'm a unionist and the Liberal government is trying to attack our education. They're trying to increase our fees by 25%. They're trying to make people on a lower income pay back even higher hex debts and they're trying to take um, they're trying to take hex debts from the dead so even if you die you can't get out of your debt it'll be forced onto your grieving family and they're trying to deregulate university fees so that students 
um, could be paying up to $100,000 for a degree. So we're here to protest this and we're going to be out, we're going to be back protesting again on the 11th of May against the Liberal government's budget that they'll be releasing, which will have a whole series of horrible attacks on workers and students and ordinary people, um, a whole heap of austerity and stuff like that. government that is on the warpath, not just against students, but against every section of the oppressed and against the entire working class of this country in general. Yeah. It's a government that shamefully continues the genocide of Aboriginal people. A government, a government that tortures en masse refugees in offshore prison camps. A government that has declared war on the union movement in this country with its royal commission into union corruption that wants to lock up unionists, that wants to deregister the CFMEU and generally attack wages and working conditions right across the board. We'll be back! We'll be back! 